So, uh, good evening all. I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, and uh, uh, today we will be focusing on uh, Gromax in Jupyter Notebook. Uh, let me tell you, uh, Gromax is used for molecular dynamics, which can be used for um, structure refinement, uh, loop studies, binding energy studies, um, uh, PPI interaction studies, and many more. Uh, stability analysis and many more can be done. So. Uh, but uh, most of the time, uh, what I found difficult personally, I don't know about others, that uh, we need to keep in mind the, uh, the options of each of the commands and the flow of the commands. Of course, we know the steps, but uh, what commands to be used for analysis. So each time we have to refer some documentation. So I thought uh, Jupyter Notebook is something, a kind of an IDE can be used for Python, C++, or for uh, most of the programming languages. So uh, I thought uh, we can use a notebook uh, where we can have all the commands there, and just you go on executing the commands. Of course, you have to understand the technicalities also. We will be having a session uh, more deeper into understanding uh, Gromax technicalities in the coming weeks. But there are plenty of the videos that are also available. So today, I'll be showing the uh, the main two ones which I picked up anyway. Um, so, um, and if you have any questions or comments, uh, and also uh, in order to take part in the questionnaires which are uh, coming up in the slides, uh, please go to menti.com and you have to give the number 162066. So, this is a code that will be used for uh, throughout this session. Okay, uh, it will be really useful. So the participants who have joined via Meet, uh, kindly switch off your webcam for better buffering. Uh, you should be in mute mode. You can unmute to engage in discussions during Q&A session. And uh, kindly tell your name before engaging in the discussions via audio. All your questions could be also shared via menti.com. Please answer a few questions in the next slide, which will help us to uh, go through with these sessions and also uh, it will also uh, help me to understand how far the uh, participants are understanding. So as I told you, for to answer a few questions in the next slides, please go to menti.com, enter the code 162066, or you can just click on the link that is being forwarded in the groups. So here it goes. Uh, if you go to that, uh, uh, menti.com and uh, 162066, uh, you will be able to uh, see that just to understand what is your research field, I could see someone has already submitted it. So you can just select uh, which is your field. At the bottom of the page, there is a submit button. So just to understand how, uh, which from which different area are uh, the participants from. OK, I could see that equally from three groups. Others, OK. I'll wait for a few more seconds to just understand. And I can see already there are four questions people have posted. That's great. OK. Great. Nice. OK, so uh, there is uh, a more of uh, modeling, molecular modelers, bioinformaticians, and a good uh, 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 amount of participants uh, in uh, pharmacology, medicinal chemistry and also biotechnology, including chem informatics too. Interesting. So let me give an overview here uh, where molecular dynamics could be used. Computational chemistry and molecular models, you already know where to use, so I need not to specifically mention. But going to bioinfo, when you're doing some homology modeling from converting sequences to the structures, which we had a very detailed session last week, uh, which was uh, a, a live demo on modeler. Uh, if you want to uh, watch the recorded session, is there in my YouTube channel. Uh, it was uh, taken care by Ajay, my student, as well as myself. Uh, so those model structures, if you want to refine them to understand the stability, all those things can be, uh, you can use molecular dynamics. Going to pharmacology, of course, uh, ligand interactions uh, or uh, conformational analysis, aposite, and uh, uh, those things can be analyzed on the protein side. Of course, when you're talking about pharmacology, uh, you have to have an understanding of both the drug side as well as on the biological system. 
coming to biotechnology of course you have uh, you play around with the dna but uh, if you have some interest on computational studies it will be really helpful if you understand the mechanism so molecular dynamics will be useful but uh, keep in mind uh, there is a combination of physical terms that is biophysical terms will be there in uh, and also thermodynamics involved uh, so you might feel it difficult but uh, believe me uh, you have to do some reading and a bit of understanding will help you to get into uh, molecular dynamics everyone try to not to touch it but please go into it it is very very important as you have seen recently many of the good journals when you do molecular docking studies they also ask you for molecular dynamics uh, studies also and we just do a minimization just report the energy sorry it's not that is enough more uh, analysis is also required coming to chem informatics uh, a bit of uh, conformational studies can be done also on the other side of uh, proteins on the ligand aspects also anyway thank you so much uh, going for the next question uh, so the uh, next question is just a minute something happened okay sorry it, it just overrided it. okay so the next question is that does uh, um, you have already filled this how many of you are currently using Gromax okay I could see already three of you have uh, uh, given okay okay someone has also tried and felt it hard okay okay I'll wait for Two, three more seconds because the last slide around 12 people have already uh, casted the vote okay okay so i can see majority here is no and tried but hard uh, yes is there around 30 percent but 70 percent is of no and tried but hard so the tried but hard i am sure after this session uh, it will be very easy for you uh, for the execution of your commands uh, because of uh, and then of course the technicality and the theory part is also very important uh, the people who have not used uh, gromax uh, try to understand what is the significance of molecular dynamics and simulation in your research and uh, uh, then you can use the software now uh, there are other softwares also available for molecular dynamics let me tell you uh, there are mainly uh, one is gromax uh, which works only in linux it can be worked on Windows using Sigwin. Uh, I don't recommend, but yeah, if you want, if you are strict that you want to work only on Windows, then you can use that. Otherwise, uh, Linux is the best. Second is uh, Amber. Uh, Amber tools is now free, only for a GPU-based calculation. You have to pay. Otherwise, all the others are free. So Amber tools, uh, it's also one of my favorite. Uh, so that works very nicely. And the third one is uh, uh, NAMD. NAMD works for both the Linux as well as uh, Windows. It, of course, for Mac too. Mac uh, for uh, uh, Gromax as well as uh, Amber also works for Mac. Uh, so uh, yeah, NAMD works for all three platforms. And VMD, uh, the visualizer goes along it uh, very nicely. The fourth one is uh, Desmond. Uh, Desmond is from uh, D Shaw. If you go to the D Shaw website and if you're an academic. Uh, you get the free version uh, from Desmond also. Uh, so that has a GUI. Uh, ensure if you have only CPU and no GPU, uh, you have to go for Desmond 2018 version. And it works only in Linux, 64-bit. Uh, 2019 version, it needs GPU, otherwise it doesn't work. For the other, all the others, you can run it on a single CPU. You can run it on multiple CPU like uh, MPI or OMP or SMP. Uh, these are don't don't worry about those uh, terminologies they are just uh, whether you are running on multiple thread or multiple cores it's all matters then it can also support gpu so how do you compile it based on that it will be helpful okay going for the next uh, just to rate your confidence on the following so how far you know uh, the so each one of you can select all of them uh, you can rate them from 1 to 5 1 means you don't know much uh, 5 means you are an expert there so you can cast your vote. So each one of them, you can slide it or press on two, three, one, and all. And at the bottom, you have a submit button, and you can submit. So as I already named uh, the software names, I have listed there. Uh, so oh, someone is using already Amber. That's great. OK. And uh, uh, understanding of MD uh, detail theory rather than 
just try now. I'll wait for a few more seconds because in the last slide there were around 13 people uh, casted their vote. Uh, sorry, some background noise. Uh, I hope it is not disturbing you. Okay, so uh, fair enough, almost eight people, uh, nine people have casted their vote. So I can see uh, you're all uh, kind of okay with the Unix commands, uh, but going for MD detail theory, it's kind of okay, okay, not even 50%. Um, so, and Gromax is again 1.6%. Few are using uh, NAMD and Amber. So let me tell you the concept or the steps involved or the theory involved in Gromax, NMD, Amber, they're all similar. The algorithms might be different, the parameterization will be different, and the options that you wanted or the commands that you want to execute certain task is a bit different. But otherwise, the science is same, okay? Uh, there are certain changes and differences in Amber, NMD, and Gromax, but as I, uh, in my previous session, I used to tell you, first have a problem statement in front of you, understand what are the strengths and weaknesses of each of these tools and choose the right one for you to solve your problem. Rather than if I tell you Gromax is the best, might not be good for you. If I say Amber is the best, might not be good for you. So you have to test it and then come up, okay? So today uh, I'm just doing Gromax because it's free. And most of them are being hearing a lot about it. That's why I have chosen Gromax. I'll be coming up with more uh, notebooks, uh, Jupyter notebooks for Amber and NAMD also. Great. So uh, uh, as you all know, today we'll be discussing about the usage of Gromax in Jupyter Notebooks. We all should refer to open source references and no promotions of paid products entertained. All the opinions and discussions are personal views and with no connection or relation to current employers or corporates or any other individual, okay? And uh, I would like to also thank uh, my group members as well as the LLB group, uh, uh, also, uh, because uh, I, I could see some of the members have joined from that group too. So uh, thank you so much uh, for all of you joining here. So now uh, we will be going for demonstration. First, we will carry out the installation, uh, then uh, understand a little bit about support libraries, uh, then command or syntax basics, just a few things that to keep in mind, which will be helpful for you to do any kind of preparation of commands or notebook, uh, Jupyter notebooks. Then Gromax MD steps, which I've already compiled it. It almost took for me around four and a half hours to compile everything, test everything. Uh, to be honest with you, I've never found any notebook for Gromax in the web. I found few of them, but bits and pieces here and there, not completely compiled. So I can claim that uh, this is something will be useful for you for a thorough, complete uh, run. Then visualization within the notebook, so you don't use any VMD or PyMall or Chimera, you can use NGL view within the notebook to visualize and even animations. And result analysis, like um, generating graph, like RMS, RMS D, RMS F, then energy parameters, density, pressure, temperature, as well as um, gyration, so all these things can be, uh, and even if you want to export into a high definition, I mean, high resolution uh, pictures, those can be also done. So now let me go to the installation part. In order to install, uh, first thing is what we require is Anaconda. Ensure that you have at least one to two GB of space, hard disk space in your uh, computer or laptop, at least a two GB of RAM you have, free that means if windows is using already 1 gb you need you need to have at least 2 gb extra available and uh, uh, if you have a dual core uh, i don't recommend to run high uh, time scale uh, simulations but if you are a quad core uh, um, cpus like i5 with four core uh, or threads or even if it is i7 they are fair enough the latest i3 that is the 10th generation i3, of course, comes with four cores also. So uh, you can see how many number of cores based on that. Uh, don't give too much stress to your laptop and um, PC. It might heat up. I have a, uh, the machine that I am running have an eight core, that is i7. 
I have other machines with the 32 cores also. So uh, be sure that uh, you don't give stress too much to your laptop. Anyway, so going to anaconda.org, you have to go to download Anaconda. And uh, uh, this is a site uh, uh, going to uh, help you. So you need to go further down at the bottom. If you scroll down, you will be able to see Anaconda installers. I always recommend you to go for 3.7, Python 3.7, um, because uh, 2.7 is very old. So 3.7 will be something that is moving forward. Uh, as per whatever you are having, like 32-bit or 64-bit, I recommend 64 only because many of the um, code binaries for molecular dynamics supports the latest one supports only 64 bit so if you have 32 bit you can go ahead but you have to go for older versions of uh, binaries for other softwares a bit difficult but still doable so windows you can just click on it it will download and just uh, install it when you're going for linux and mac os there's a script dot sh and then uh, just execute it and run it it's nothing hard it just gives you questions, ask you a question where to install, whether to uh, put it in the path, environment variable or not. You just give S to everything. Being you are a newbie or an expert like that, you can decide. But there are, when you click on that, there are uh, many more documentations available. So it will help you like a review documentation, individual edition. So it will help you to have an understanding about the parameters. Now, let me tell you, I'm not doing the installation completely here but I'm going to show you an easiest way, okay? So that uh, this one you have to do manually, no other choice. Once this is done, the rest of the things, my uh, notebook will be taking care of it, okay? So this is the first one. Going to my notebook, this is a notebook which I have already created. I hope it is visible to you. Otherwise, I will just increase the font size, okay? But if I increase the font size, things might not look good, but let me try. Okay, great. So install Anaconda from web. So as you see here, uh, this is what I showed you now. After installation, okay. Now, before uh, going for this installation part, let me explain about uh, Jupyter Notebook. Then I'll show you how to open Jupyter Notebook and also let me show you that first. So um, Jupyter Notebook can be opened via a command line. So let me show you the command line here. Okay, so you can see a command line here. This is what I have already opened it. After installation of your uh, uh, Anaconda, uh, you can uh, uh, open a command line, let it be Linux, let it be Windows, let it be Mac, it is all the same. If it is Windows, it will be there in your start menu. Just go to the start menu, click uh, and Anaconda and say Jupyter Notebook. Otherwise, if it is in any other platform, you just say Jupyter space notebook. That's all. When you give that, your browser will open and your browser will open and this is what you will see. So once your browser open, this is what you will see. Ensure that from where you are using, uh, from where you are uh, opening that Jupyter space notebook, that folder will be your home folder for this thing. So now I have opened this uh, um, particular uh, uh, folder uh, from Gromax uh, Jupyter Notebook, right? So from there, I have all these files accessible. I cannot go back to other uh, folders. That will be my home folder. So keep in mind, whatever folders you are trying to open. So if you see here, let me tell you PWD. PWD is to understand which is my current directory. You can see this is where uh, uh, I am uh, now. And then from there, if I use open Jupyter Notebook, within that folder, whatever is accessible will be accessible to me. So I have already run all the calculation, but I'll be rerunning it everything for you, okay? So this is how you open Jupyter Notebook. Now, uh, after opening Jupyter Notebook, if you want to create a new notebook, so once this page is come, it might be there might be no files there, you have to go to new, click this new, and say new notebook, right? That is a new Jupyter notebook. Or if you want to create a folder, you're saying, I want to create a new folder 
within this folder you can create a new folder so those are possible others i'm not going it right now we will discuss that later so if i click on this new jupyter notebook a new notebook has been created if you want to give a name you double click here and you can give a name i say online demo ensure that you don't give any space uh, being in linux mac and all it's recommend don't give space either you can give an underscore if you wanted to give and that would be nice so just rename it the extension will be ipynb that is the extension since i have installed only python 3.7 the python 3 is being shown here now this is where you call it as a cell okay so i can type anything whatever i can type anything but if you wanted to put it as a comment you have to put a hash symbol right and then say this is an online demo now if i wanted to run this cell if i go to cell and say run cells okay i just say run cell nothing happened because that is a command now let me enter uh, put another uh, cell in order to enter uh, in next line within the cell just put enter so that it will go to the next line but if you want to add an another cell you just click this plus button that gets added to another cell right so here i'm i'm telling um, okay so let me try to print uh, input uh, your name okay. and then i'm saying uh, sorry data is equal to input and then i say print data and now i execute it there is some error so what is that error it is a parenthesis error right so it will tell you what is the error also so it is very important that you need to know some syntaxes now, earlier i just gave let, let me make this as a print and then here i'm giving a print uh, then if I give this as within the parenthesis and let's see what happens. Again, invalid syntax. So this is what I was telling you. You need to know the syntax very properly. For that, you need to know a little bit of Python. If you do not know also, just go to the wiki of Python and try to understand uh, what and how it should be maintained. So understanding of syntaxes and commands are very, very important. I'll show you the right way to do it. Not now. Okay. Now, if you want to add a heading now, so let's say I want to convert this cell to be a heading. So you click on this and say, I want it to be a heading. So heading means uh, um, this will be a main heading, main heading. Okay. Now, if you wanted to add another cell and you say, I need a, a normal heading, and then I say heading, and then I add another hash. Uh, jointly together you can see the size of the font is getting reduced right so uh, subheading so if you want to give any um, like data like that what i have used in my notebooks the same thing will be there now if i wanted to convert this to a, a normal markdown just to make it uh, uh, some notes or uh, this is a demo session on a jupyter notebook so this is kind of a markdown. So if you are having any cell, ensure that um, that it will be de designed as a code. If it is not defined as a code, then uh, it will not be executed. So keep that in mind. Here, if I uh, put that hash and uh, if I execute, see, this is how it looks like. But it doesn't show you any execution of the code or any program. So if you want to run the code as i told you already you can go to cell and run the cells now if you say that i don't want to see this error in my uh, clear i will clear it off go to cell current output clear so the errors are gone now if you wanted to get an output again or if you want to exit this cell uh, execute this cell or run this cell press the shift key on your keyboard and press the enter key and now you can see it is executed right now let's do the uh, this same step once again okay so data is equal to input uh, parenthesis uh, name now i add enter now i give print now i really don't know how this print to be carried out right 
what you can do is there is a self uh, 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 help q tip l help menu within the jupiter for that you need to just type a uh, tab key within your uh, um, what to say uh, the notebook right so this uh, i'll be showing you in the next slide which will be having more libraries being loaded but this is how it is normally if you want to save uh, you can uh, make a copy or save it as save and checkpoint is always good otherwise automatically it will be saved on every uh, few seconds okay but i recommend in between you save it because if some issues with the connectivity then there you don't require any internet your machine itself will act as the server and that's where you get this uh, uh, particular thing now if you wanted to run it on uh, run the calculations on a different machine and you want to access in a different machine there are a few steps available that will be in my uh, uh, GitHub, which I'll be giving uh, more details on how to do that. OK, so keeping all this in mind, uh, if you want to get out of this particular page and log out, you can do that. I'm not doing that anyway. Now I'm directly going to my uh, uh, notebook, which I have already created. OK, so first thing, if you have already installed Gromax, then you can avoid this step. Otherwise, you can execute this step. So in order to execute, uh, I told you that you have to do shift plus enter. That's how you execute it. When you execute it, ensure that you're connected to internet. Uh, if you're not connected to internet, the Gromax will be not installed from Anaconda. So this Gromax installation happens from Anaconda. It will, it, uh, there are two versions available. One is 2016 version and the other is uh, 5.1 version. Okay, here I am using 5.1 version. Then, after installing the Gromax, either as I told you, if you have already have installed and compiled Gromax, it's all fine. If you think that all these installations are very difficult, I'm using Linux, uh, then please go to my YouTube channel. Uh, there is a video already there, uh, Linux installation or Linux for computational uh, research. There I have used Linux Mint Syn through Synaptic ma uh, Package Manager. You can install Gromax. Uh, there, the Gromax will be the latest version. So if you are using the latest Ubuntu, it will install 2020. If you're using older, like 18 version uh, Gromax, uh, sorry, Ubuntu or Package Manager, it will install uh, 2016 or 18, okay? Anyway, so in version is not a matter, but ensure that if you're doing a calculation, you run it on a same uh, version. There are incompatibility between the version older and the newer versions so keep in mind whatever you're trying to run in 5.1 if you try to extend or trajectory analysis on 2020 or 2018 there will be issues so ensure that you're trying to use the same version throughout for that calculation okay now after installation of the gromax uh, we need certain libraries for analysis for example ngl view ngl view is a library that is being used here for visualization uh, I'll quickly show you, a, oh no, I have to initialize it, but after that, I'll show you that. Then MD analysis is another uh, library, which is mainly for molecular dynamics analysis. Then Gromax wrapper is very important. Gromax wrapper is for you to execute the Gromax commands, like GMX commands. I'll show you. There are two ways you can execute the commands in this notebook. One is through Gromax wrapper, the other is directly. Uh, I felt both are very convenient. It's up to you which one you want to pick it up. PyTrage is again for trajectory analysis uh, and also uh, plotting, so which we'll, we are using it here. To make angel view to use, uh, you have to execute these two commands also. Now you have to imagine in earlier um, notebook, I didn't use this exclamation mark. So keep in mind, wherever I'm using exclamation mark, these are the commands that I can execute in the command line without a notebook, right? So notebook can only execute the libraries or Python script, which we have initialized. But if you want to execute any command line, let it be Unix, DOS, uh, MS-DOS, or uh, even Mac, uh, a terminal, all those commands, you should have a prefix with the exclamation mark that will execute as a command, like a shell command, okay? So this to be executed so that your NGL view also will be initialized. After that, in order to do plotting, we would require numpy and matplotlib. Usually numpy and matplotlib gets installed uh, with uh, Anaconda, but just to make sure we can do redo that again. 
So we need numpy and matplotlib. Anyway, you, you uh, we can add that if you wanted to get installed. So here, what you do is the same command. After install, you will say numpy space matplotlib. You just give that command, execute it. So if you want it, but usually it get installed by default with uh, um, Anaconda. Okay, so. Uh, I'm not going to execute these first uh, four of them because I already have them. Now, next is where we are importing these libraries. I already installed these libraries. Now I have to import the library. If I want to make use of any libraries in my notebook, I have to first import. That means call them, like what you do in C program, right? Similar to that, if someone has done C programming or Perl or Python, you have to call their libraries. So here I am importing uh, the library matplotlib. Hereafter, I don't want to give matplotlib as a lengthy uh, uh, text so that I wanted to import matplotlib as MPL. And I want to import matplotlib.py plot as PLT and numpy as NP. So these are short forms that you can decide what you wanted to give. But keep in mind, what is your library short form? Okay, that is applicable only for this notebook. By default, the original one is numpy is the name. Next, we need a PyTrudge uh, Py and NGL view, which is required for trajectory analysis and visualization. Again, uh, PyTrudge I'm uh, importing as PT and NGL view as NV. Now, I told you if you wanted to execute Gromax uh, in a better way, so let me show you uh, if I want to put this in the next line so that you all can see it. Okay, so I made it as a next line. Gromax wrapper is required to use gromax.option commands. Otherwise, use the exclamation mark before GMX commands. So if you wanted to run it as a Unix shell, just use the normal GMX command with exclamation mark. But there is a catch there, which I'll explain. Otherwise, you can use Gromax wrapper, which is very handy um, uh, library, which where you can define each and every parameters of the GMX commands. So if you want to import that Gromax wrapper into your uh, library, you have to type again import Gromax and import Gromax.formats. Now, once this is imported, and if I execute this, then it will show my Gromax um, uh, version, which is installed, that is 5.1.14. So let me do this. So I am executing this particular uh, 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 libraries. So shift enter. Now you can see there's a star asterisk. Asterisk means that is now running. Okay. Once a number comes there, that means that is the number. That is the fourth execution I have done in this notebook. Right. Now I will uh, do this also. Like I am shift enter. You can see that is number five. Again, shift enter. It is uh, reading the libraries. Now it is six. So asterisk means it is reading the thing or execution, executing it. Once the number comes, the execution is complete. Now, again, shift enter. I'm just doing shift enter. It goes on the next. Shift enter. It is importing the Gromax and Gromax uh, wrapper libraries. If there is any error, it will ask you, but this is fine. It is saying that um, uh, where the uh, Gromax um, uh, files or uh, initialization to be done, you don't require. You can just leave it as such so that your current directory will be used. Okay. Now I am asking what is my Gromax release. You can see it is a ninth execution, 5.1.4. Now, one more thing very important. If you have installed uh, the Gromax via Anaconda, GMX lib should be defined. GMX lib is the library for the Gromax with all the force field and the other parameters will be there. If you're normally compiling your Gromax uh, using your compiler in Linux, uh, the standard directory is the installation of the Gromax folder. Inside that, there will be a share directory under that Gromax, then top. Within that directory, you will find all the uh, force field parameterization, right? If it is not uh, having, if it is having any issue, uh, please uh, use the command to search like which uh, locate or where or find in different platforms and find uh, where the .ff files are available or ITP files are available so that you will find all the force field. If you don't have it uh, assigned, you can do this. In my computer, uh, Gromax is installed in user local and that's where the share Gromax top is being come. But you can, if you are using a different location, kindly update this path and execute it, okay? Now, 
one more thing what i have done here is i have taken this particular example i hope you all of you know the famous site mdtutorials.com i have used uh, uh, this particular uh, tutorial as an example because i don't want to do anything new uh, because you need to have references to technical aspects also here they have explained each and every step uh, the technical side the science behind it so that's why i picked up this additionally i have also used uh, uh, ADK Gromax tutorial uh, also something similar so I have mixed both of them together uh, to have a better understanding of the analysis part so in the previous uh, here you will see there are different steps like defining the box solvating it adding the ions to neutralize it the system then you energy minimizes and then you do equilibration the NVT and NPT and then you do a production MD run and finally you do analysis similar way instead of doing um, NVT NPT separately here they are doing something called as position restraint equilibration where NPT and NVT is also there so uh, I have combined these uh, both the tutorials and that's where I made the uh, notebook so I will be posting these links in the YouTube description as well as in the uh, github so in the github you will find the notebook as well as all the uh, mdp file because mdp files are the parameter file for you to run each of the steps and i will show you uh, where you have to modify an mdp file there are three um, four main uh, parameters that to be modified as per your system and that i will show you okay so these are the two uh, tutorials i have followed so for the technical aspects and uh, more uh, detailed designs please go through and uh, i would like you to refer to this one good so now uh, the first thing you have to do is everywhere i have used a standard name prot.pdb and rest of the names are automatically being generated so i would recommend where before you start uh, uh, putting in your protein so i am doing here a protein in water right it here we have used lysosome that's only the example so i want to remove hydrogen uh, sorry water and clean the pdb so for that i am uh, using uh, grep uh, I can uh, clean them uh, completely so this is not in a command line so I have to do uh, this way now uh, here uh, being I am putting it online it will ask for you this question it's up to you to give yes or no okay I don't have anything because you have to download this notebook and use it now this is what I was telling you about the heading now if I double click to edit now you can see uh, this is what I was telling you when I gave a three hash and this is uh, called a markdown uh, or sorry heading and this is another markdown so one thing you have to keep in mind if you are executing GMX using a command or shell based as I told you you have to start with exclamation if you're doing exclamation keep in mind you have to assign your am uh, force field also most of the time when you give this step it will ask for an option which number or you have to enter a number like six is for amber 99 sb i think so uh, 15 is for opls so you have to enter the number so we are giving defining the force field within the um, uh, command itself now there is another way also which i'll be telling each step when we are going so in this step uh, we are trying to uh, like define the water as well as the water space that is spc and also the amber 99 sb that is a force field there are other force fields also available and all the output you will be able to see at the bottom like this right you'll be able to see the bottom and at the end this is something which i like everywhere gromax if it is successfully completed comes up with some proverb or some quotes from different scientists right now anyway otherwise if there is an error it will show you the error. now in order to i wanted to see what is the end of the top file because that's where we see that uh, it has been uh, correctly initialized so if i want to execute uh, this is anyway the completed uh, top old file so here i can see the ions are already added but again we are going to add it only next there's a protein a chain and uh, uh, solvents around these many uh, atoms i mean uh, residues are there now next uh, step is to generate the box and solve it in order to generate sol uh, box and solve it we use the command uh, edit conf and we give the uh, input file which is being generated from the previous step that is uh, prod clean pdb we have used and the output can be either gro or it can be even pdb also so keep in mind 
you can either put it as pdb uh, uh, format or gro format both formats are readable by many of the visualizers okay so this is the output which is where uh, i have uh, generated the topology and then uh, so that file is now used as an input here and after generating the box this is the file name i have used so initial pdb you just rename it to prot p r o t that's all rest of the names will be automatically generated now the advantage of this notebook is all your next steps are already there your job is only to execute them and change the parameterization so don't think this is black boxing it's a kind of black boxing but keep in mind you have to know each step what you are doing for your protein then only you will, you will be uh, successful in running your simulations right now um, also i am making it as a uh, cubic or you can change uh, uh, how this could be a uh, box uh, to be defined so here i am generating the box and solvating the protein again uh, the calculation is being run and uh, let's see what is the output uh, so it has given the uh, volume uh, as well as uh, the vectors and all of uh, the system size everything is given there now here it comes where i wanted to uh, introduce the other command as i told you we are using gromax wrapper the gromax wrapper helps you to run the same command at the bottom you have the normal command which you runs on your unix right gmx to solve it and you are staying that the prot box is the box definitions that to be used and this is the criteria and this is the output where you have solvated the protein and you are update and using the topology right the same command when it comes to gromax wrapper you use it in a different way use a gromax dot solvate now let me show you how this is going to help you now i say gromax and when i uh, press on the tab key earlier i told you you have to press tab key it will be showing you some options yeah now it came so when you press the tab key it will tell you what are the possible uh, options that i can give here so this is very very helpful if you uh, know or understand a little bit of uh, what uh, gromax commands are so there are plenty of them which you have never might be looked at right so all the gromax uh, commands will be here so now let me give solve it right it will get automatic completed again i press on tab right it is not coming so that means we have to give now let me uh, do one more thing to understand how to what is the format or what is the syntax which i was having last time in the notebook issues right for that what you have to do is press the shift key of your keyboard and press the tab key you will see what is a signature what is the type of that command and what are the uh, what to say uh, the syntax so you have to give an argument as well as k walks if you go to gromax wrapper website uh, they have clearly given how these to be given so at the bottom if you see cp minus cp or dash cp here you just give within the parenthesis cp equal to within the double quotes you are defining this name that's only difference so whatever uh, the uh, optional flags you want to give instead of dash you put it cp is equal to and within the double quotes you define what is a file that's the only difference between this command and this command both will be doing the same job same output no difference but there will be a different in the next step i'll tell you what is the difference okay so this same command is what is being executed here right so as i clearly given in the commands uh, uh, commanded here uncommand above line if you want to run gmx through gromax wrapper and do not execute the next step i don't want you to run both of them right so if you think that you don't have gromax wrapper just don't run this cell only run this cell if you think what you want to run only through gromax wrapper don't execute this one execute so for that you need to uncomment so wherever i have written uncomment means you have to just delete that hash so this you will be finding in this notebook throughout the calculation so you can use any one of them you don't require both why i used it uh, it you will get to know from my next notebooks there is a lot of advantage of using gromax wrapper that i will let you know next time okay so after solvating uh, of course you got to know the density the volume everything you came to know including the sol molecules now the next step is to add the ions now i am not going to repeat the same step because we already discussed about that in the previous step so gmx uh, grompy uh, and then uh, we are giving the again the input file ions.mdp file right this uh, file uh, let me show you so this is a file which i will be also uploading to 
uh, the uh, just a minute. Uh, let me make it bigger. Yes. So this also I will be uploading it to the um, the GitHub. So you can, if you wanted to modify something, you can modify it. So here I'm just doing MDP. So this you can see this is a text file. Exactly that what is there in the uh, lysosome uh, tutorial, right? So you can modify usually the steps and others. But here I'm not asking you to modify anything. Uh, let us keep it as uh, same. Uh, if you are trying to use uh, different uh, force field like charm M uh, or uh, um, uh, or Gromos, uh, so we have uh, a different parameterization to be given here in NS type and NS list. So as uh, the frequency to update the neighboring list. So that should be changed. For example, Amber, I recommend you to put NS list to be 10 and NS type uh, also again symbol or grid we have to match. So that's where I under, I told you, you need to have a little bit of technicality understanding on what to use, what not to use. Don't think that you can use this for every biological or macromolecule systems, okay? Anyway, so going back to this, uh, so after the execution, uh, we have this uh, iams.tpr file get generated, right? And uh, you could see here, there are a few warnings and notes. Notes are okay because they're just warning you. As I told you earlier, uh, the varlet list of optimal NS list should be or equal to 10 uh, for CPUs, right? There it was only one, that's why the warning came. And uh, system has a non-zero total charge of eight. So this is where uh, we wanted to ionize it, right? Uh, so we want to neutralize it, sorry. We want to neutralize it. That's where we come up with the next step. Now you will see, apart from an exclamation GMX genion, you will see something extra here. This is what I wanted to tell you the difference here is. Printf is uh, something which is something different. Let me show you the difference between printf and the other. Okay. So here, uh, let me uh, show you a uh, command like a GMX uh, a PDB to uh, GMX. Uh, let me copy it so that should I waste the time okay so I'll, I'll just copy this and put it here to show you the difference so that you will have a better understanding now here um, protein clean I will rename this to test okay just for testing uh, let this be there okay, just for a uh, testing purpose and I wanted to uh, Okay, uh, give me a minute uh, because I, I don't want to disturb the top wall file. So let me move that top wall file. So I'll create a new directory, uh, demo, uh, then CP, uh, the prot. Uh, so that I can copy the PDB. So the PDB is here as one AK. So CP one AK dot PDB to uh, demo. This is just for, uh, don't get confused with anything. I, I should have done this earlier. Sorry for that. Uh, so what I'm doing here is, I will uh, take uh, I will take this and uh, uh, do it as a different step, okay? Um, give me a minute. So I'm going to create, uh, go to that folder. This demo is my folder, I'm going here. And uh, I'm just creating a new notebook like last time. And uh, uh, I need not to uh, import anything because I'm going to use this command, um, which is there. It's already there. And I wanted to uh, bring in another command also, which is the grep function, uh, where I was removing the water molecule. So let me do that also. So that I want to show you an example why I'm using the printf. Because if you miss that, it is a you, you, you cannot run Gromax. Uh, within the uh, notebook. Uh, so that is very important. Uh, okay, so I am here. I'll add one. So if you want to make this uh, cell to go up, you select this and uh, click this so it goes up, right? So it has gone up. So I have this prot uh, PDB in already in this file. So I just executed it. Now the prot clean has come. Now I'm executing the next command, PDB to GMX. Now we have an issue here. Now it is asking to enter the uh, force field. We don't have any option within notebook uh, to enter anything when it asks a question. Now this is the reason why we are using printf 
or grow max uh, wrapper now hope you understood so if you are normally executing your grow max when it is asking to enter the force field you cannot because if you give 15 here it will not run it will not run nothing will run it did not accept and you can see the grow max is stuck here it is still in the execution stage so it is still waiting an input from you so in order to automate that input you need to know what is the input that you have to give prior that is very important in notebooks so i know that i wanted to use this particular amber i mean amber 99 sb as my force field so that is the reason why what i do is i give print f okay amber oh sorry uh, i will give 15 that would be better 15 and then uh, this one okay i have to stop this also so first i will stop in order to interrupt the kernel you click this that is to stop so you can see the now the number two has come now i'm going to execute this again okay i have mentioned as opls or let us say i will choose the same force field that is five number five let me give number five now i am executing it now after executing you can see that it is being completed now let us go to the folder and see what is happening uh, i need to just refresh this oh it didn't generate uh, there's some other error let me check oh yeah there is one more thing i have to uh, choose one is uh, whether i have uh, the water model because i did not define the water model in order to define the water model again there is another option you can say that i wanted to enter it as a next entry for that you have to give slash n so here i will give uh, let me say one okay so one and then i close that line right that is done so i am uh, and i will stop this uh, grow max because it's still it's running so now it is for now i am again running it now it is complete you can see that it is number five so what it has done is when i'm executing this it has automatically taken amber as a force field which is a number five and also it has taken uh, the water t uh, tip uh, 3p uh, automatically and it has already defined everything and you got the code let's see the folder now you can see the top all file is generated now this is the reason why i am using printf because i, I uh, you know that we need to know what does not work if we make a mistake so that is why i took this much time to explain it to you but this is really helpful because if you want to run any commands which is asking any question just use printf and if it is asking four questions you need to have four slash ends so that all the questions will be answered one by one in gromax we have that situation so we will be doing that in coming uh, uh, examples okay going to back uh, to the folder you go to the back folder so this is where we are now anyway i am closing this because we don't want to uh, confuse with the notebooks so here we are back to this notebook so let me go back where we were discussing why we require printf so hope you remember now the advantage of printf I, I don't want this because this was just simply added so i can uh, click on this uh, uh, thing and i go to edit and i can say delete cells okay so that that cell is gone so here in genion it is asking you what you wanted to add uh, in this particular uh, continuous group or solvent i wanted to add only sol sol right that is the reason why i have given print f sol so this is when you are going to execute it now there is another form for this one uh, where is it did i use it here no i will i will show it in the next genuine can be also used in a different way so uh, just to see what is the final output so i can see in order to neutralize it uh, the charges they have added uh, eight uh, chlorines uh, cl's and thus the system is being neutralized now the next step is going for uh, energy uh, minimization so energy minimization again you can use uh, this uh, and also you have to look at the minim.mdp uh, keep in mind where we are wherever we are using this minus c uh, they are using the previous data and to continue the simulation right so it is not your ultimate uh, simulation so it is just continuing from the previous ones so here minim.mdp it is being data is being used which is again from lysom the tutorial and we are using and it generates an output called a tpr file so it also here no questions being asked it takes some time to do the calculation and at the end you get the data so in order to run md run this is something very important if you when you are running md run that is your simulation job 
Uh, keep in mind you give minus v as well as minus nt2. Let's say you have four core, four CPUs with you, four thread cores with you. You wanted to use only two because if you give four, you cannot do any other job or um, you shouldn't touch your machine. Let it run. If you are in that way, you can give four. And uh, keeping all the other applications closed, keeping if your machine is maximum having four cores, you use it for. But otherwise, use two. So if you want, you can modify this. I have eight here. I can use eight even, but I don't want to because I'm using browsers and other things. Be on safer side. So minus NT space two can be used uh, to assign number of CPUs. Okay, and EM is the um, the the what is it? Title that I have given. So automatically, if you see here, the em dot uh, tpr and in the min minimum dot mdp, I have defined this. Automatically, it takes that as a title. Now this can be run either this way, and you can give Amberson symbol. Not required, but uh, if you want, you can give because Amberson symbol will help you even if your terminal gets closed. The Gromax continues to run. In this case, if something happens and your terminal gets closed, your Jupyter Notebook terminal gets closed accidentally, Gromax stops as well as your Jupyter Notebook stops. So it's your option how you want it to do. It's This Amberson symbol is only applicable for shell scripts, uh, the command line, or even for this one, not for Gromax wrapper. Okay. And now this is for Gromax wrapper. V, I'm telling you, yes. Defenum is EM and NT is equal to 2, like what we have seen earlier. So after this calculation, it has, as you can see here, all the results are also being displayed here. You can save this as a notebook for later if you want to look at each step, how the change in the energy, all those things are happening. And now it is writing the lowest energy. At the end, now we have another thing where we wanted to um, uh, plot uh, the potential. So there we use GMX energy. GMX energy is a command which is used for basic thermodynamic properties of the system. So here uh, we have to define what is the system. 10 and 0, I predefined it using printf, right? Hope you remember. But in Gromax wrapper, we have a different way to do it, OK? So here I have to define 10 and 0. 10 is potential. 0 is your system. Automatically, it takes up. So that's where it has uh, taken automatically. If you're doing, um, uh, if you want to plot a graph, again, you want to define a variable as a potential, and then you have to uh, generate a XVG file, which is, I mean, read the XVG file, because XVG file, anyway, it is written here, right? So from your um, uh, data that is generated from the simulation, the minimization, we are uh, uh, getting an output data as XVG. XVG, in order to read XVG file, you need to have XM grace, right? XM grace is a software that to be used in the command line. But in the Jupyter Notebook, we have other libraries available like matplotlib and others so that we don't require XM grace here directly, OK? Otherwise, in the command line, you XM grace will help you. It's a grace. Um, you just search the software grace plot or something like that. You will get the software to install it in your machine. So after that, I wanted to plot in two different ways. One is I wanted to, uh, now XVG is a file, it's not a picture file. It gives you a data like an Excel sheet, uh, which tells you what is the data on X axis, Y axis, and all, but we have to define it. Now, this is where I am defining it and converting uh, the float into, inde sorry, integer into float and string. This is what uh, the command is used. Here I'm telling, which is the plot, what I wanted to plot. I wanted to plot potential, right? And I'm saying x axis to be the step and y axis to be the potential. So let me, uh, so this one I executed, this is the picture that I get, right? So these are the potentials and these are the steps that is being taken care. Now, this is the first uh, energy minimization step that we have taken. Now, uh, if you have any questions so far with respect to Jupyter Notebook, not about Gromax, uh, you can unmute yourself and you can ask me if there is anything. Otherwise, we'll go on with the next few steps, which is something similar. I'll be today more focusing on how to generate these graphs and plot things and export the data. This is where uh, many of them having difficulties. Yeah, if you have any specific questions, you can unmute yourself and go ahead. Otherwise, I'll continue with the next steps. Uh, are you I, first thing is are you able to understand 
can someone unmute and tell me if everything is okay or uh, uh, you want me to repeat something no it is okay sir okay um, but if you have any questions so far let me know okay no, it is going smoothly sir thank you for your good explanation no problem thank you so much so uh, we will now go for the next steps with the equilibration step again uh, it's from the lysosome okay so uh, that uh, we are uh, moving forward just a minute uh, let me have some water okay so uh, in the next uh, equilibration step that's where we are doing uh, uh, with the temperature right nvp is what we are going to do so here also we have from here you will have um, either the command execution command or a gromax wrapper command i'm not going to explain each one of them as i told you we will be having a technicalities uh, and all these things session will be separate uh, there we will be more discussing about science behind gromax today i wanted to make your life much easier uh, by executing these commands which will be helpful for you to uh, like remember your commands what is going going to be next uh, record all your output data so that you don't miss anything on the command line so that is a main purpose so uh, after the nvt uh, initialization of course mdp file has to be also written uh, taken from uh, lysosome and then this is again everywhere same only thing going to change is what you are writing here as um, nvt.tpr or the file name or the title that is mentioned in the input file you you mentioned that here okay after that uh, uh, this is a gromax wrapper where you if you want to run uh, md run you could you would have seen last time i have used yes here otherwise you can use as true also because it is just v we don't give any values there so that's why okay so uh, now this is something very important i i thank uh, ajay one of my student last time who did modeler uh, he helped me to find out this particular command if your uh, uh, md run or simulation gets interrupted let's say power went off or you accidentally closed it you need to restart it to restarting if you give the same command this will be an issue because the top uh, tpr file uh, will have issue on overwriting it so in order to extend your calculations this is the uh, thing for any extension you need to define the checkpoint cpt that is called a checkpoint so by default you can say run with the minus cpi here by default also you can give it but anyway without giving that also a uh, gromax will generate the checkpoint files so that uh, if it gets interrupted uh, the checkpoint it writes each uh, steps right so if it want to start from the uh, next step where it got interrupted you can define minus cpi and nvt.cpt so that will help you to extend or continue your calculation without interruption so that you need not to restart the whole thing so this is something very handy uh, of course uh, for me uh, because if there is power interruptions or something this will be really helpful okay uh, the same thing can be used in gromax wrapper this way right so gromax dot md run uh, v is yes defnm cpi is equal to so now i hope you will be able to easily convert all your gmx commands to gromax wrapper because whatever is there is the minus v that is v is equal to within the double quotes that's where you give so whatever minus defnm this is the data you're defining nvt is the data for defnm so defnm is equal to nvt so i hope now it's much more feasible for you now uh, yeah, again, uh, GMX uh, energy here, we are taking out the temperature uh, from NVT. So I have already plotted this, as you can see, a uh, similar methodology I have used for XVG. Anyway, it gets uh, generated from GMX energy command. And then uh, we go for the uh, next uh, to uh, extract the data and plot a graph from there. So this is what the plot is. So I have done only 100. Uh, uh, picoseconds. So as I told you, it's a demo. I didn't do any long run yet. And then this is a temperature ranging from 296k uh, cal Kelvin to 306 Kelvin, right? Now we are again moving to the next steps like NPT, again the equilibration, extended equilibration step uh, where we are bringing in pressure, uh, density uh, with temperature. Now here also we have the same command available with where we are taking NPT and also the CPT from NVT, and we are taking a, a, a TPR file from uh, generating NPT uh, TPR file. 
So uh, it took some time for the initialization, and then we did an MD run, right? Again on two CPUs. So after doing MD run, you will be able to see it was running on two MPI threads. Uh, it ran 5,000 steps with 10 picoseconds. Let me tell you, for publications and uh, production, um, you require more. Uh, but as I told you, just for demo purpose, I just reduced all the numbers so that I can get some quicker results, right? Uh, so uh, don't think that this is enough. No, you need a much more extensive. So I'll be referring to two uh, YouTube videos, uh, which was from uh, uh, from NPTEL as well as uh, uh, he's a uh, professor who has very nicely explained the scientific part of molecular dynamics. There are two lectures. Very, very nice, actually. Uh, I would recommend. I'll show you which one are them. So uh, again, for each step, I have given you how to extend or rerun or uh, interrupted MD runs to be run. And then this one, I ran it on three MPIs, like, uh, uh, and it took uh, 5,000 steps with uh, 10 picoseconds. Now you can see for just for two core, it will tell you how many nanoseconds this calculation can do per day. You can see not even a single nanosecond it can do per day. So it is always recommended for you to run uh, I would recommend you to run a small uh, initial MD run to estimate how much days it might take. Of course, automatically, um, 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 Gromax will tell you uh, the job will finish by this particular date, this particular time. Right. That anyway, it will tell you. But uh, uh, to optimize how many number of CPUs to be used, because if you are dedicating that complete machine for your uh, MD run, it's OK. You use all of them. But if you want to use some for some and some for other analysis, then you have to test and find it out. So uh, only after calculation, it will give you this data. How many nanoseconds per day and how many hours it requires to complete one nanosecond. That is what it is written here. So it requires 29.7 hours to complete one nanosecond. As you know, uh, that's what I told you. If you're running on a two core or a three core for larger system, I would recommend not to run longer nanoseconds. You cannot achieve there because your computer will be having a lot of stress. I don't recommend that. At least for learning, yes, you're free to do, but you can see it takes more time, right? Now, uh, again, I wanted to, uh, same step, uh, generating the uh, pressure XVG. Uh, so I already defined uh, my entries that is 17 and O. 17 is, uh, is defined here as pressure. So maybe if you're using Gromax 2020, it could be 18 also, right? So check what is that in the option, um, and then only enter accordingly, OK? This I'm using is 5.1.4. Uh, that is a Gromax version that I'm using here. So uh, here, after the pressure uh, being uh, plotted, uh, I could see, uh, as per the time, from 0 to 10 picoseconds, what is the change in the pressure from the initial geometry of the first to the 10th time, OK? Again, uh, we did the same thing with the density. And uh, we uh, defined the density as 23 here. So 23 is density here. Check with your versions. And then uh, we plotted density versus time. Now, this is what I was telling. I was uh, merging position restraint equilibration. I didn't do that because here uh, we have to generate a postrest.tpr. So I just skipped it. But the result analysis, I took all the NVT and NPT. Because as I told you, uh, position restraint equilibration, they're again NVT and NPT only. But uh, uh, I have used what is there in the lysosome. Okay, So uh, this can be executed, but I left it like that anyway. If you have VMD already installed, uh, of course, you have to give uh, uh, this one, uh, QET uh, console. Uh, so that uh, your uh, VMD will pop out from your notebook and uh, it will be visible. Now, coming to the production run, that is equilibration molecular dynamics or production MD run. Uh, that's where we bring in the MDP. Now, I wanted to show you the MDP file. All other files are there anyway. Uh, so, I, But importantly, I want to show you the MDP file. So cat MD dot MDP. So cat is a command that can be used in Linux also. So here, uh, you need to have an understanding about your uh, calculation. So here, uh, I have uh, given the femtoseconds as 2 and uh, 5,000 uh, as a step. I reduced it, actually. I told you, right? I wanted to reduce the number of steps. The actual calculation is uh, um, these many uh, 2 into um, 5 lakh, 
uh, steps will give you 1,000 picoseconds. 1,000 picoseconds is equal to 1 nanoseconds. So in order to have 20 nanoseconds, you need to have 20,000 picoseconds, right? So 2 into uh, maybe 1 crore uh, will help you to get 20 nanoseconds. So uh, if you wanted to do 50 nanoseconds, you need to have 50,000 picoseconds, right? So that is what you make changes here. Okay, don't don't think about 5,000. 5,000, I told you, I have reduced it in order to make the calculations faster. Then uh, you have uh, one more thing that to be taken care. Let me check. Ah, NS type, uh, NS list, NST list. Hope you remember, NST list was one earlier, right? I'm using Amber here, so I, I have to use at least 10 of them. Uh, 10 uh, on a CPU and GPU, I, I should use at least 20. So these things to be taken care. Uh, there will uh, the reason is if you don't make changes artifacts will be there but sometimes these artifacts will be very minimal uh, so that it's okay uh, it doesn't uh, have any much impact on the accuracy but let us go with the right uh, parameterization why should we make mistakes so uh, these are the things that you have to take care uh, and this is something very very important uh, and uh, how many nanoseconds you have to use it is well explained in the uh, lecture which I am referring to. So what uh, the professor there, he was uh, referring to was, if you're doing a refinement, for example, you did a homology modeling and you wanted to do a refinement, uh, 10 to 20 nanoseconds are fair enough. Uh, if you're doing any ligand uh, uh, protein interactions, he's, uh, he's recommending around 50 to 60 nanoseconds. But something for loop and uh, refinement, uh, fold analysis, uh, he is recommending 100 nanoseconds. So uh, down the question, I agree with all of you that do we have that much uh, capable hardware resources available? That is the reason where we always uh, tell uh, with the reviewers that we don't have that much hardware to do that analysis. So when we go for a higher level journals, of course, they go for if you have any loop or uh, open or closed confirmation analysis on your proteins, uh, that's where they require 100 nanoseconds. So, but I have seen some posters when I go for review, uh, some students have done even for refinement 100 nanoseconds, not at all required. Why do you want to waste the energy, time and money? Of course, money is there when you do calculation, uh, power and manpower, everything, right? So uh, for each step, uh, for each analysis, try to uh, set these N, step, N steps and DT very proactively by reading some papers and reviews, especially reviews rather than papers, to understand where you need more numbers, where you need less numbers. So uh, that's why I wanted to uh, explain this md.mdp file, very important, because that decides uh, uh, what is the need or whether you unnecessarily ran it, uh, wasting your resources and time, OK? Anyway, so after running this, uh, we came up with uh, output file. So here you can see, again, the same as a nothing, nothing wonder. Uh, it, it, it again takes 33 hours to uh, run one nanoseconds in when I gave around the two uh, CPUs I think yes two CPUs yeah I used only just two CPUs in that i7 and it uh, it takes 33 hours to run one nanosecond so imagine if it is 20 nanoseconds how much hours or how many days that, that that's what we have to calculate Anyway, so if you have a GPU, um, uh, for example, recently I bought a GPU uh, for uh, NAMD as well as Amber, even for Gromax, I could see uh, using 32 core, uh, I'm able to run 20 nanoseconds per day, 20 nanoseconds per day. Uh, of course, uh, for the other resource I have to pay, uh, but GPU is something that I purchased. And on GPU, I can run um, uh, close to 35, Again, depending upon the system, okay? So a number of atom increases, your nanoseconds goes down. So don't think that in that computer, any larger system is going to give you the same 20 nanoseconds, no. Uh, yesterday, uh, when we were trying to do a benchmark for a larger system, uh, the same 20 nanoseconds per day on 32 CPUs, uh, for that particular system, it does only 11 nanoseconds per day. So keep that in mind. How much you are solvating, how much number of atoms are there, your performance also has an impact there. So ultimately, what I wanted to say is when you want to do a, a very sensible, reliable molecular dynamics, you have to unfortunately have a very good hardware resources. 
very unfortunate very sorry to say that i know uh, many of us do not have uh, good access to um, uh, good machines there are online uh, portals available like md web uh, but again uh, for larger system it's very very slow you have to wait for many days to get the results anyway at least you will get something okay keeping all that in mind and uh, knowing all those difficulties we have to still move on and i gave a name as md0101.cpt uh, uh, dot CPT as a checkpoint and uh, then we ran now let's go to the trajectory visualization so in order to do trajectory visualization we have this command called gmx trj con and uh, i took the uh, tpr file xtz file i centered them and uh, defined the pbc of hope you know periodic boundary condition that is called pbc so I need to now visualize it, right? So let us visualize it. So uh, yeah, one more thing. Uh, this is again the advantage of printf uh, uh, command. The first step I have to define what is my system. So I have defined the system protein, which I have given protein. If you have a second entry, you give slash and system slash, and that is where you close it. So this is for the first question, and the system is for the second question. So the first question protein is entered, and the second question system is entered, right? And it is it is getting executed and again i'm doing a trajectory uh, visualization for backbone the earlier one was done with the protein and the system next one was backbone and system now let's visualize it okay so for this visualization we have used ngl view so i'm just running this oh my god uh there is some error let me see what is it uh, okay oh i can, I, I think uh, in between i did not initialize them so if if you don't initialize your libraries it doesn't work so keep that in mind because i was not running all of them i, I did not rerun uh, because all the commands are already there so let me see what all not run so ngl view is run uh, okay so those are run yeah i think this can be fixed not a problem Okay. Okay. Um, let me take this off. Oh, maybe this one. And then let us see. Okay, so the visualization is here. So this is what you see the visualization. As I told you, you don't need any extra visualizer uh, within the, uh, uh, you need not to go out. And now if you want to see the trajectories, you just play and you can see the trajectories. So this is the beauty of uh, NGL view uh, library, which was installed, right? Now, if you want to see which are those amino acids, you just mouse over on top of it, you will be able to see them out. And then if you want to change the representation to from cartoon or uh, to wireframe, CPK, surfaces, everything can be defined in the command line. I will be putting a separate notebook in the GitHub because I don't want to confuse it here, okay? Now, next is I wanted to uh, view the trajectories uh, after the minimization. So this one, I'll execute this one. Okay, again, view two is not defined. So let me see where is view two. Uh, okay, so this is the error. Um, C to view two. Okay, now this should work. Where is it? Okay, view one. Okay, so uh, finding uh, finding the error is also very important. So when you have some error, ensure that you read them carefully and update that. For that, you don't require too much of knowledge, but at least a patience on understand. So it was saying that view two was not defined. Uh, just see where view two was first used and um, uh, change it accordingly as where it is already defined. Okay, so keep that in mind, okay? So now this is where uh, I have uh, defined that particular, I extended uh, that region, uh, only that region as a trajectory to see uh, what are the cycles. So I have 100 frames, that 100 frames are being listed here, okay? So this I have taken only a, a small uh, region uh, to see uh, how uh, this analysis is going forward now again uh, the same uh, thing i have done for uh, different analysis on rms rms f uh, rms d 
gyration. So those things have been done. Now, what is this RMS or RMS team? Calculate the root mean square deviation from a reference structure. So you might be having a reference structure, which is your initial grow file, right? Which we have taken from the PDB. So from there uh, to the optimized one, we wanted to compare the RMSD value. That's what we are doing. And then we generated the RMSD.xvg and with the units of nanoseconds. If you think PICO, you have to mention it as PS, OK? So here, nanoseconds. Again, uh, printf, I have defined it's between the backbone and the system. And uh, uh, you first, you define the backbone and the system. And then again, you define for plotting. You don't see much uh, plot here because, as I told you, I did only 10 picoseconds. So you don't see much deviation. If I run at least 10 nanoseconds or 20 nanoseconds, you will be able to see the actual peak anyway. Uh, the same way, uh, I have repeated again uh, for uh, uh, the reference structure uh, with the RMSD without a periodic boundary condition also be being checked. And then uh, again, that is also plotted. Next comes with the gyration. So gyration is uh, to understand how uh, tactfully uh, the protein is packed. Uh, that's what we wanted to understand with the gyration. So gyration also, we executed it. Uh, so this, I don't know why there is a green and a yellow color, but I did another method to plot the graph. There it came beautifully. Now, another is uh, GMX make in NDX. That is, this is very important. This is not there in lysosome in water, okay? NDX is uh, automatically, Gromax actually indexes all the groups, okay? Uh, there are certain groups. Groups means proteins, uh, solvent, uh, ions. They are being already grouped. But if you want to group a certain a set of amino acids or atoms for specific analysis, for example, to calculate the distance um, uh, between one atom to the other atom, or if you want to understand what is the conformational changes has been taken from a uh, amino acid from this am uh, one amino acid to the other amino acid, uh, for that you need to know. Uh, on which uh, uh, number or which position which amino acid is there okay simply you cannot follow the tutorial for your protein also so in your protein which amino acid you are looking at that number you have to give so gmx ndx is to generate the index file okay after generating the index file i have clearly mentioned here uh, so what is it here yeah so i want to keep one what is keep one so i want to keep my protein in my index file so this is the content of your whole system it has protein, uh, protein hydrogen, C alpha, backbone, main chain, all these are there. So I want to only pick a few of them for further analysis. So I'm picking up my protein and then I am defining C alpha, the 129 atom C alpha. Others all are removed. I'm taking only those 129 atoms of the C alpha. And at the end, I am indexing uh, by giving a name C alpha. So I created an index file of ca.ndx keeping only the protein and the C alpha atoms there, just to understand how the change is happening with it. Now, I again do a, a RMSD calculation to understand on this index, how far the changes are there on that backbone. Uh, that is what I displayed in the trajectory earlier, that single line. So I did an RMSDA for the CA. Uh, there's a small uh, shift anyway. As I told you, it's only a 10 picosecond calculation. Uh, again, after that, I did another um, uh, fit analysis to understand. Uh, so this is another way of uh, plotting. This plotting, we have used matplotlib. So here, what it tries to do is, uh, the advantage here is, it will try to fill your uh, graph with another color. Next, it can also export your plot as PNG file, SVG file, and PDF file. So, and with a DPI of 300, I hope you know in many publications, they ask you, I need a graph with 300 DPI. And we always struggle with the Photoshop and many other tools uh, to make a 300 DPI resolution, right? But uh, recently, I think anything that you convert to PDF is a vector graphic. So anything with PDF is always good. So no problem. Uh, nowadays, there's no much struggle. But anyway, so uh, you can export your graph uh, as a PDF or SVG or PNG. Let me show you one example. So I have a, a last modified. Yes, let me show you a PNG file. Uh, where can I find a PNG file? OK, uh, yeah, it's here. So the PNG file is here. So this is a PNG file. So I can I can save this as a picture. So save image as a picture. 
So this is a PNG file. You can see how high a resolution. This is called a 300 DPI. So in order to export these kinds of high resolution graphs, I would recommend to use a matplotlib command that is here. This is the same uh, plot that you have seen here, but you, you can see the content is a bit different, right? So th th we are using different. Uh, there also we have used matplot. Here also we have used matplot, but a different uh, um, uh, like libraries and uh, helped us to come up with more information. Again, we did for C alpha. Uh, then uh, again, this is a normal uh, uh, way of uh, plotting it, which we usually seeing it. This is the same plot which I did it uh, for exporting in a higher resolution. You can see they are the same plots, but with a different color. If you want to change the color, you can give the color here red. You can change it to blue. You can change it to yellow. So any any color you can give. So if I say blue, if I uh, execute it, you can see the blue line here. I just made it blue, right? I said the residue should be blue with a line style of dash. If I want to make this as equal to, you can make it equal to. All these things can be done. So you're, whatever you're giving in command, it comes into the picture. Ensure that this all works only after your complete production run. Again, I'm making a, so this is the command. This is not there in lysosome in water, which I told you. It calculates the distance between atoms or groups of atom where we have made an index file. And that is where make uh, NDX we have done to define the group of interest, which we already did, like keep uh, protein and uh, consider only the C alpha atoms and all. Then GMX mindings is especially useful to find uh, uh, the water molecules close to a region of interest, right? So if you want to very focusedly look at some distances, uh, water-based uh, solvation, uh, then uh, confirmation analysis of atoms, change in bond length, sorry, bond angles, dihedrals, all this we use GMX distance, okay? And uh, on the same thing, again, uh, we, we can plot uh, uh, things. And then next is we do gyration. Uh, again, protein is chosen. So you see here, there is no extra lines. Earlier graph, there were some lines here. I don't know what was it. I need to a little bit more dig into it to understand. But here, uh, for a 10 uh, picoseconds, uh, uh, these things are, are looking fine. Uh, then ultimately, if you want to further visualize this, um, okay, so okay, so the trudge, I have trudge one is not uh, defined. So where is trudge? Oh uh, yeah, here trudge. I made a mistake. So now if I execute, it should come. No, okay. View is not defined. Let me take off this now. Okay, so it's clear. So I was playing around with some settings, and now it got clear. And now everything is good. Yeah, it is good. So after this is the indexed one, which I uh, uh, I picked up only the backbone uh, with um, the, the C alpha. Uh, so this is what you are seeing. There is only 37 frames there, which I picked it up. So um, if you see, this is the whole notebook, uh, which has beginning from the uh, cleaning of protein till analysis, including visualization. Even if you want to uh, export this picture as a high resolution, same is possible uh, where we have to modify this particular code. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, this particular code. This particular code. Uh, I'll be including that also. Okay, that is from NGL view anyway. So uh, that is all uh, today about my session. Now uh, I will be uploading all this notebook, all the MDP file uh, to the page that you are seeing now. That is GitHub slash Giri Bio. Uh, already, I have some nine uh, notes uh, in my previous session, which is there in YouTube channel. You will be able to see some nine workflows. I'll be doing more nine workflows also. Uh, COVID-19, some data is already there. We'll be uploading in coming next two, three days. We almost finished with some few analysis. Um, uh, then MD notebooks, this is where you will see. So in the MD notebooks, I will be uploading uh, the file. And all. now. When you're downloading uh, the files from either directly download it, the GitHub users, either you can clone or download it, okay? So keep that in mind. You can either clone or download it. So all the files which is here will be downloaded locally into your uh, hard disk. And if you have installed Anaconda and uh, just open Jupyter Notebook in the same folder where the uh, notebook which I am sharing with you will be there, then you're good to go. 
there will be no errors nothing because all the errors i have clearly mentioned it to you so that i am sure that there won't be any issue but if you have any issues uh, you can go to github uh, go to issues okay of course you need to have an account here and you can click on new issue and uh, report to me i will clarify and uh, correct it accordingly uh, as i told you i never found anything like this as a single page uh, some are there here and there but anyway good uh, so uh, that's all from me for today uh, let me go to the session and take some questions oh my god oh, okay already 12 questions are there let, let us see how i can answer um what is the advantage notebook using over using the commands as a shell script uh, anybody in the audience uh, i mean in the participant who have already used gromax after seeing this session could you please answer this question I, then i will give my uh, answers please anyone can unmute yourself and answer i would appreciate that Ambli, do you want to comment something? Now I have to pick up someone. <laughs> Nobody is there. Uh, I heard that few were, few of them were using Gromax. Okay. Anyway, I'll tell. I don't want to waste your time. So the advantage is everything is confined into a single page. Uh, you don't forget your commands. Uh, parameterization can be easily done. Uh, if you want to uh, uh, edit the file, uh, just edit the file and then just execute it. Uh, result analysis on the tip. You, you you have everything on there. You just change the numbers, what you wanted to uh, consider and what not to consider. So if you want to make any changes, what you have to do is, as I told you, for example, here, uh, um, where is it? Uh, yes. Here, uh, the distance I want to calculate. So here I was calculating the distance of uh, two different indexes. One is I52 and K145. So here I'm defining uh, two of the indexes. Uh, that is what is going to change. Otherwise, nothing much. Uh, here, when I'm creating an index, so uh, the names, if you want to keep the same name, you keep the same name. And now if you think that I don't want to mention it as time PS, I want to mention it as NS, you change it here it as ns and run it uh it should uh, oh i didn't i didn't run this that's why uh, where is it? oh yeah so i run this and run this okay now it should be no problem so now you see time ns so these are the small modifications you can always do no problem but uh, understand what you're what you're doing and then accordingly you can make changes okay so that is the best advantage. So you can revisit again, reuse it again for any system. Only thing is change the folders, uh, rename your protein to prot.pdb. That's all you're doing. Uh, of course, you need to understand your protein also, which chain you're taking. All those things you have should have a better understanding before doing any molecular dynamics. So once everything is set and bring in the prot.pdb into this folder, new folder, have this notebook also in the same folder, start running it. So that makes life easier. easier. Can you run Gromax MD simulation on Google Colab? Um, sorry, I have not tried it because you need to have Gromax installed there. So unless you have Gromax there, you cannot run it. Uh, I know that in Colab, uh, through network, you can run any uh, uh, software engines, but you need to have a public IP based uh, things and also I didn't go through that. And for a beginner, I, uh, like all of us, including me, uh, it will be a bit difficult to connect uh, through the network. If so, can you please do a video on the same? Uh, as I said, Colab, I can do a video, but not with Gromax. What's your views on running Gromax over Galaxy platform? There is option to create workflow. Yeah, yeah, of course. Galaxy is something similar to, uh, what to say, Nine. You can have workflows there. But the question is, how many has access to Galaxy? Second, workload. Uh, third, uh, learning curve. The main intention of these notebooks is to, um, make simplify your learning process because most of the time you run a command it doesn't run then you lose your patience oh my god i what is the error here i, I couldn't run anything what is happening so at least here you are getting some error on documented and you can share it with something hey this is the error can you please help me so uh, that is the difference galaxy is a very wonderful platform but as i said there's a learning curve so these notebooks can be used uh, within your laptops to learn get experienced with uh, your uh, 
initial tutorials and initial uh, running uh, understand the technicalities and science behind it then go ahead with uh, advanced platforms and uh, come out of your notebook also you can directly run on your unix commands because you already know what are the commands that to be used for each step because in the notebook it's already explained using a notebook is it possible to perform the calculations in windows of course yes as i told you uh, if you use sigwin sigwin uh, again the same commands can be used there because sigwin brings in the linux environment to windows so exactly the same command no difference only thing you have to install all the libraries as i mentioned uh, initially what are the minimum system uh, i think i already told you this uh, min uh, hardware requirement is always unfortunately something uh, demanding so for learning process two is fine as i i, I wanted to uh, do this only with two even though i have two because i want i know that everybody has at least only two cpus or cores as well so at least i want to show you how you can at least run so that's why i, um, I showed an example with two cores Sir, uh, can there a separate session on input generation via Charm GUI and running that in Gromax or NAMD? So, uh, the Charm parameterization for ligands, as you know, you can use. Uh, there are many platforms available that we will be doing. Uh, Charm GUI, I don't know uh, whether, uh, again, you are referring to an online platform or offline. Offline, it's paid uh, through, uh, it's, uh, through BioVia. So, Charm is inbuilt in BioVia's platform. So I really don't know Jam Jam Jio other than web platform. Is there in anything else through web platform? Yes, we can do that uh, for the coming sessions. I can consider that. Thank you. I'll I'll note it down. Uh, can I use Jupyter Notebook in HPC? Yes. Uh, for that, you need to have uh, your Anaconda installed in HPC. Okay, uh, and uh, all the nodes should have Anaconda uh, installed. Uh, Gromax installed, libraries installed. Libraries not all required, but at least for the Gromax wrapper. If you have that, yes, you can. Because for uh, when I'm giving minus NT2, it is for your local machine, right? Instead of that, there is something called uh, uh, TMOP, uh, MPI. Uh, these are all for your parallel machines. So yes, you can you can always use it for uh, um, uh, all your sessions also. I mean uh, HPCs also. Should we download Python? Uh, so with Anaconda, Python 3.7 comes inbuilt into it, including certain libraries like, uh, as I told you, Matplot, Lib, uh, NumPy, and some other libraries also comes along with it. So uh, you need not to have uh, Python already. Now, there is a conflict comes. If you already have a Python installed in your machine, maybe 2.7 or thing, once you install um, Anaconda, it might ask you to set the environment variable. When you set the environment variable, uh, your uh, complete uh, computer terminal will be using only Python 3.7. So conflict of versions of Python, please be careful with that. Please explain MD for membrane proteins for say, uh, as I said, uh, we will be having a session dedicated for uh, technicalities of molecular dynamics, even in Gromax, that time we will discuss. Today it was more concentrating uh, just on notebooks and how to simplify uh, running Gromax. Can I get installation link and requirements? All the links, instructions, everything are there in this particular notebook, as you see, right? In the initial, whatever you see here, I will be uploading it to GitHub, which I told you already. Uh, so the notebook will, as such, you will be visible here. You can get all the links, everything from this particular website. So GitHub slash Giri bio, that's where you get uh, this notebook, okay? Uh, then uh, please explain MD. Oh, I think already I told this. So as I told you, we will be having a session. How to get all your reported commands in Jupyter for practice? As I told you, I'll be putting it in GitHub. You can use it for practice. You can use it for your production run. Just change the parameters in your MDP file uh, to have a, a good production run of 50 nanoseconds or 20 nanoseconds. And as per you using a different force field, also uh, try to change your NS list and NS type. Um, so that is where you have to understand the science behind MD, okay? So read some reviews, uh, which will be really helpful. And those two uh, tutorials, which I've told you, is also helping you. What if I have to run my uh, job in GPU? Okay, let me show you that. In the lysosome, if you go to the last step, uh, they have given you a command to run it on GPU. So if you have compiled, so let me tell you one thing. Whatever the installation instructions I have given you in the notebook, there it is not for gpu okay for a newbie i am telling 
but if you have already compiled your gromax in gpu then you need to just execute this command you can see here i hope you're not let me uh, zoom it up i hope now you are able to see so gmx md run defnm md01 whatever name you are giving minus nb gpu if you have two gpu you have to give the gpu id again zero or one gpu id starts from zero so you have to define the gpu so for that you need to have your gromax compiled under gpu just execute this command in the notebook it works on the gpu so no problem but the installation what i have given you is not for gpu it is only for cp okay so thank you so much for that question what is the acceptable value range of rmsd in nm um, i'm not going to answer this question sorry because as i told you uh, for different uh, uh, proteins uh, we have to see the data how far we have run the times here i have just run on the picometer uh, sorry uh, picoseconds so i will take these questions during the uh, gromax session okay i mean the md session free energy landscape uh, calculations possible yes uh, again, uh, we'll be. I'll be uploading a new uh, what to say uh, notebook. But for free energy landscape, I would prefer more of uh, um, amber uh, because MMPBSA and others are there by inbuilt. But for um, um, uh, Gromax, of course, there is a, a plugin available, but that works only for uh, version four as well as for version five not for any of the other versions that has recently come up. I'll be doing a session for that. Uh, this is just an introduction session, so. Okay, <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, hopefully, if it is useful for you, that is always the best. I'll be happy for that. How do you look the complexity of protein ligand simulation? Oh, no, no complexity there. It is always the same. But uh, as I told you, uh, protein ligand simulations uh, the binding energy calculation comes into the picture. So there are other uh, uh, libraries, uh, I mean, programs also comes into the picture. As you know, you already know that there are two things that you have to take care, right? That, that, is, that is a take home message from this notebook. Either use gromax.grom, uh, sorry, a gromax wrapper. So gromax.tab. Whatever is here listed here, and wherever you see for protein ligand interaction or free binding energy interaction, all these commands should be here. If it is there, no problem. You can carry it or see Genion, GenConf, GenBox, or GMX Dumb, uh, all can be GromP, Gyrate, um, all these uh, details are here. So if you have, if your uh, all these commands are here, then you can run any calculations which is going with this GMX commands, okay? So uh, any any anything is possible. If Gromax wrapper is not supporting, the best method, again, I told you, you go with your normal exclamation mark, execute the normal command. But keep in mind, if they are asking for any input, any input in between, you have to give this printf. And you need to know what is the input that you have to give beforehand. If you're giving, um, if you're giving just like this, this is only for one input. If you want to, if it is going to ask two times the question, you have to give two times. So my uh, slash n, and then I'm giving another 10, uh, one uh, slash n. That means it is, uh, it will enter two times, or it is asking for two questions and you're giving two answers, okay? So those are possible, so no problem. Can you make a session for transmembrane dynamic simulation in future? Yes, that will be the last one. Sorry, <laughs> not, not in between, that will be the last one. Uh, how to connect Situin with Python and the notebook? Uh, okay, uh, what I will do is in the GitHub, I will uh, give a, a text file uh, which uh, gives you an instruction uh, to connect the Situin uh, and the links to download so that you can run uh, Gromax in Windows. But keep in mind, it will be the old version of Gromax, probably five or four, not the latest version. Uh, please share about NPTEL lecture uh, that you were referring to. Uh, that's true. Let me let me let me show you right away. Uh, just give me two seconds. Uh, let me go to YouTube to get that lecture uh, because I was watching uh, uh, it. So let me get that. Uh, just a minute. Uh, 
that's a very nice lecture actually there are two lectures uh, please um, listen to it he he just not uh, explains about the software he explains about the science behind it so that is what i liked a lot because if you know the science behind molecular dynamics you can use any 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 software it it doesn't matter that this uh, only this specific software can be used um, let me i should have done that earlier searched and kept it ready for you yes i got it okay let me sh let me show you that okay so uh, i hope you are able to see my screen now um so this is the page uh, molecular dynamics and simulation by vidya mitra uh yeah it is from mhrd ugc patshala yeah uh, patshala so this is the paper 14 bioinformatics module 22 molecular dynamics 1 there are two sessions so if you go to this website itself you'll get i am posting this uh, um, link it will be there in my youtube but i'll be posting to the uh, uh, google meet link uh, i mean google meet uh, participants also so you might have got a link now so uh, there are two videos uh, each one is like 40 45 minutes please listen to it it's a very good one uh, this is the best uh, explanation i would recommend for you both uh, for this one okay uh, so that is done uh, thank you so much Uh, for ligand topology we need external you are right you need a external um, uh, web server uh, yes uh, there are uh, a few web servers let me show you again i am i'm going to this md tutorials that's the best one uh, to start with so um, so let me show you that you can do it offline also but again you need to download all the libraries and then do it so i i i don't want to have uh, Uh, you need to uh, oh my it is too much of scripting i don't want to do that so don't think that uh, yes uh, ligand topology yeah so these are the websites that is available for ligand topology uh, for amber already anti champer is there uh, with jaff which is already inbuilt uh, then for charmum you have cgen ff uh, gromos you have prodrug i think prodrug is down probably they will come back atb is there opls you have others even you have swiss charm also also there so sorry swiss param uh, swiss param is also a web portal for you to generate a topology for uh, ligand once you have the topology ah uh, yeah let me let me define that uh, when you once you download your force field there is one option that you can do let's imagine uh, where is it Ah, yeah, this one. So let's imagine that uh, you are doing this step, okay? Uh, so let let imagine that you are downloaded uh, uh, the force field files. You just uh, say minus ff. Let's say I am having a um, um, uh, folder called the force field uh, slash. Then I I say amber force field or whatever it is. You just give the name what you downloaded. Then it will use that force field. If you think that. uh you are not using this right which we earlier uh, doing that in the sample uh, let me take that sample uh oh where is a folder yeah in the sample uh, i'll take this to just to show you an example so here um um instead of five whatever is there in your folder let's say you downloaded charm m march 2019 uh, force field okay and you downloaded and put it in your same folder uh, when you run uh, uh, pdb to gmx automatically whatever you have kept in that folder that will be the first force field automatically so you can put here one so the software will automatically take it as whatever you downloaded if you do not want to do this which i showed you uh, just few minutes back like you give uh, the folder here and the name of that file it will take it so either way you can take it so that is my comment for uh, ligand topology thank you so much uh, hopefully i want everybody to start using uh, this notebook uh, in another 2 um, hours i'll be uploading all the data to the github uh, and then uh, we will be 
I'm looking forward to your questions to help you out. So my intention for this session was there are plenty of molecular dynamic sessions coming up and they are different. OK, uh, this uh, is more dedicated for uh, people shouldn't be reluctant. Oh, grow max is difficult. No, it's easy through this notebook. I wanted to make uh, things much easier and uh, more users uh, to use uh, not only Gromax, Amber, NAMD. I'll be coming up with Amber, NAMD also notebooks. It takes time. If you ask me uh, for this notebook, it took almost uh, four and a half hours uh, for me to build it actually. And then testing and the one and a half hour. It, this includes calculation time also. So as you as you all lively saw that some view one was not identified or defined. So we have to test it. Anyway, uh, when you're going to take next lecture. So all my lectures are on Saturdays and Sundays at 4 p.m. It is fixed. In between, some sessions will come up like a follow up. So tomorrow uh, we have a session. Uh, my student, uh, Ambli, uh, she will be taking uh, a demo on QSCR software. Uh, again, free software. Uh, so that also tomorrow it will be at 4 p.m. Um, if you want to understand the deeper into QSR, uh, in my YouTube channel, there is a do's and don'ts on QSR is there. So there you have a detailed, uh, uh, I mean, <laughs> detailed walkthrough, like more I spoke about how not to do QSR. So I think that will be helpful. And uh, I got many questions about Autodoc. Whatever Autodoc questions you have, all is being answered in my another video, uh, which is called Advanced Tutorial in Autodoc, that is for molecular docking. That is also in the YouTube session. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, looking forward to the next session. Stay safe.